Hey everyone, Jeffrey here. And if you want to start avoiding arguments and fights in your relationship, then watch till the end of this video for my five most practical tips that you can use to stop arguments and fighting once and for all. And for the best, most actionable, and most practical tips that you can use to improve your relationship or your marriage, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button to be notified whenever I post a new video every Wednesdays and every Saturdays. Hey everyone, Jeffrey here. And I've really made it my life's mission to allow couples, to empower couples to understand and to really thrive in their relationship or marriage. And so if you're stuck in this cycle of arguments and bickering with your partner, then by the end of this video, you will have five practical tips that you can try today to stop that cycle once and for all. And these are the same tips and the same strategy that I give hundreds of my clients. And I've worked with couples who are intensely arguing for two, maybe three, four, five times per week for years or months on end. And after they learn this stuff, they can start to calm themselves down and actually stop arguing and avoid arguments completely and for good. And tip number one to stop arguments or to avoid arguments is to really stop making assumptions. Because assumptions are really the number one way that arguments and fights begin. And so understand that we get really emotional when we make assumptions. So for example, our partner comes home late from work and he didn't tell us about it and we start making a bunch of assumptions here. We start assuming like something like, oh, of course, of course you're always late. You're always late and you never tell me. Or we might assume bad intentions. We might have all these nightmares running through our heads of why our partner went home late. We might assume some stupidity on their part or uh, some ignorance on their part of forgetting to, to let you know or just not caring about the relationship enough to even let you know. And the thing is that once we make these assumptions, we get emotional already. And we don't even know if these assumptions are true or wrong. All we know is that we made this assumption. It could be very subconscious in our head, but those assumptions already makes us emotional before anything else happens. And understand that our brains are really heavily biased to fill in the gaps. And really filling in the gaps is what it means to make assumptions. And so just to show you how easily it is for our brains to fill in the gaps here. So imagine you have these dots. So with these dots, try to guess what shape I'm trying to make. And so a lot of you are probably gonna guess that I'm trying to make some pentagon in some way or maybe an oval. But if you think any of those things, you're completely wrong because I'm trying to make a star. And so the point here is not that all assumptions are wrong and all assumptions are bad, is that we often make assumptions when we don't have enough information. When we do make these assumptions, our brains really convince us that whatever assumptions we make is the correct one, that there can't be any possible other way or other alternative to than our assumptions. But again, not all assumptions are wrong. And that's not the real danger. The real danger with assumptions is not that you could be wrong, but the real danger with assumptions is that you can never prove that they're wrong. Because once you make an assumption, your mode in your brain changes already. Your brain is no longer into the questioning mode or the discovery mode. It's the blame mode or the let's prove this assumption to be right mode. It's called confirmation bias. And so once we make assumptions, we stop asking questions, but we make statements. If we do ask questions, the questions are very leading and very sort of manipulative towards one direction. So we might say, are you late because of X? X being our assumption. And so really when we make assumptions, even our questions are really assumptions and statements disguised as questions. They're not really questions. And once you make statements, once you uh, ask these leading questions, it becomes really hard for the other person to tell you otherwise because they instantly feel very attacked. And so you might notice that, you know, usually when you start arguing, the arguments usually start with your partner either walking away from the conversation to say, ah, oh, forget it. Or they get really angry. They resist in a very active way and they get very, very upset. Either way, those are signs that they're resisting and they're resisting because they feel attacked. And they feel attacked because you already attacked them with your assumption before actually figuring out anything. And so stop making assumptions. The first thing is to stop making assumptions and if you cannot help yourself, then just start assuming that your assumptions are wrong. Because once you discover the other side, you'll realize that most of your assumptions and most of your fears about something, about a situation are actually wrong. And one example here is actually just myself. And I think a lot of people fall into this trap as well. So I used to think uh, when I was younger that I was a great mind reader, that I was a great people reader. And when we first started dating with my girlfriend, um, I would just assume and try to mind read everything she says, everything she does. And I would be so convinced that my assumptions were right that I never actually tried to disprove it. But once I discovered this paradigm and actually started asking questions and investigating deeper, I realized that 
99% of my assumptions are actually very, very wrong. They're dead wrong. And so I realized that I was actually pretty bad at reading people. And so once I realized that I stopped making assumptions and once I stopped making assumptions, we stopped fighting as much. And now we haven't argued or fought in a very, very long time because of this. And so on that note, what is one thing that you and your partner often argue about? So leave a comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts here. And number two is to make it a habit to begin your interactions with a nonverbal touch. And especially the ones that are more intense or more serious, try to begin those with nonverbal touch. And why do I say this? Well, reason number one is that it prevents you from saying things in the wrong way or the wrong tone. So usually when you're having some intense or very serious discussion about something, it's usually a topic in which either you, your partner, or both of you feel very strongly about that elicits very intense emotions. And so when both of you or one of you are intensely emotional like that, it's really, really hard to have a good discussion because it becomes very easy to actually say whatever you're trying to say in the wrong way or the wrong tone. And I'm sure we all have experiences where we're very upset, we're very emotional about something, and we say something, not intentionally to be mean, but our partner interprets us to be meaner than actually sounds or what we meant. And this usually escalates the argument and makes things a lot worse. And before you know it, you are in an all out war and you can't really go back to saying uh, that was a mistake. And so when you start with nonverbal touch, it really prevents you from saying things in the wrong way or tone and really protects you from that. And the second reason why this works is that it allows production of what is called oxytocin. And oxytocin is a hormone in our body that when produced, it really makes us feel very calm and feel very open. And so I don't know if you've felt this before, but when you're very intensely emotional about something, you know, something really bad happened and someone gives you a hug. Sometimes that hug can send this warm rush all over your body. And sometimes that warm rush can be so intense that you start crying. And that's oxytocin at work. And so when you're starting your interaction with a simple handhold or a simple embrace, then you're allowing oxytocin to be produced in your body and your partner's body as well. And when this happens, you'll realize that yourself, you'll start calming down, you'll start relaxing a bit, your breathing will slow, and your partner too will relax. His grip will soften, his breathing will soften, and so on. And the third reason why this works is that it creates space between problems and the emotion. So whenever you are very intensely emotional, it's a good idea to just pause for a bit and not say anything until both of you are calm. Starting with nonverbal touch is a great way to create this space between the problem and the emotion so that you're not acting out of you know, intense emotions. And so once you start this nonverbal touch, just shut up and let silence happen. And so just hold your partner's hands or embrace your partner and just stay there. Don't say anything and let the silence happen. And sometimes the silence can actually be a while. Um, so when my partner and I were first dating, we have so much pent up emotion and so much baggage in our emotions that, you know, we had to just like hold each other's hands and hug each other for weeks on end and not say anything because it took us that long to actually calm each other down because of so much pent up stuff. And so just embrace your partner, hold their hands and just let that silence happen. And as you're doing this, just watch your body and watch your partner's body soften. And so you should be feeling your own body soften and you should be feeling that whatever comes out next from your mouth can actually sound gentle and loving. But if you still cannot get yourself to actually say things in a very loving or in a very gentle way, then you haven't softened enough. And same thing from your partner. Your partner's grip will soften, their breathing will soften, but until you see all those signs, just keep holding your partner and keep holding them or touching them or holding their hands for days on end. Don't have to say anything. And only when your body and your partner's body has softened, then move forward. And you might be thinking like, this is such an inefficient way to talk to someone. This takes so much time. But here's my take on this. This might look slow, but it's faster than trying to say something and resolve something when both of you are still in very intensely emotional. Because usually what happens is when you try to resolve some conflict, when both of you are emotional, it ends up bringing you backwards because you guys are fighting. And so you might think you're going faster by trying to like take a shortcut here and uh, address or try to resolve your conflicts before both of you are calm. But actually you're going backwards. You're going even slower than just simply sitting still, embracing each other and just not saying anything. So what seems like a very inefficient way is actually the fastest way that you can do to actually resolve something in your relationship. And number three, once you actually get both of your body and your partner's body to soften, then you want to use open-ended questions until you find the gold. And often the funny thing is that we think we're asking questions, but many of our questions are really accusations and statements 
disguised as questions. So we say things like, did you do X? Did you forget to take out the trash? Or are you doing X because of Y? And so these are questions, yes, but these questions are very hostile and they're very accusatory and, and it never starts a conversation very well. And so what you want to do is to actually start to ask true open-ended questions. And the first thing you should ask is usually something like this. Hey, tell me what you're feeling or tell me what you're thinking. And this is a very open question that doesn't assume anything, doesn't attack in any way. It's just telling our partner, hey, tell me what's your most painful feeling or thought. And let's start there. And so you're letting your partner start where they want to start and you're not imposing where to start or what to say on them. You're letting them kind of be an open book and say, start where you want to start. And once your partner says something, something, anything, then you're going to say, oh, so you're saying X and X being whatever they said. So, oh, so you're saying that you feel betrayed. Oh, so you're saying like you don't feel loved. Tell me more. And so there's two parts to this. The first part is where you're just repeating or you're paraphrasing something that they just said. And this actually is really good for two reasons. One is that it lets your partner know that you're actually listening to what they're saying. And two, it gets your brain in this mode of thinking because when you're listening with the intent to repeat or paraphrase, you're going to listen a lot harder. And the thing is like, you don't have to repeat exactly word for word what they say. You can also paraphrase it. You know, if you just repeat everything they say, you're going to sound like a robot. It's not going to feel genuine, but you can paraphrase. It's no problem there. And the next part to this is to clarify. And so this is when you're telling your partner, Hey, can you clarify what you just said? So, you know, you could say, tell me more or tell me more about that. Or can you say more about that or any variation of that? But the whole point here is to, once you repeat or paraphrase, you want to ask your partner to clarify further. And as you're asking these questions, you're digging deeper and deeper and deeper into their psyche and you're understanding their point of view a lot better. So you're going out of this assumption mode and going really deep into this discovery mode right now. And you want to ask your questions. And after you ask the questions, just stay silent. Don't have to say anything. This silence is really important because this silence is often your partner thinking. So let them think and don't say anything and don't cut in with your words to break that silence because when you break that silence, you break their thinking as well. And keep digging until you find that eureka moment. Is that moment where you can say, generally you can say, oh, I totally understand where you're coming from. I would feel the same way or I would think the same way if I thought the things that you thought or felt the things you felt. And the thing is that you don't need to agree with whatever they felt or whatever they think, but you must be able to understand. You must be able to understand the series of thinking and the series of emotions that led to the final thought or the final emotion. And until you get there, you haven't really dug far enough. And how deep do you actually need to dig here? Well, a lot of people, you know, think that after you dig maybe one level or three levels or five levels, you're kind of done. So they ask maybe like why five times and they're done. But really when it comes to like a very complicated issue in your relationship, it really sometimes needs to go for 10 to 20 layers or more. And usually when I work with my clients, this is really the threshold that they find once they get between 10 to 20, they find this Eureka moment, but they rarely find that Eureka moment before 10. And so just think about how differently this paradigm is of communication than what you're used to. So a lot of people are just used to maybe asking why two to five times or less. And by that time they cannot help, but say something They cannot help, but make a statement. But this is telling you aim for 10 to 20 layers of asking questions. And while you're asking those 10 to 20 questions, don't even say anything. Don't even make a statement because really you don't understand what your partner's point of view is. You are still in no position to actually say anything or give any recommendations or solutions because you haven't understood their point of view yet. So get used to asking very deep questions like this. And then step four here is to fight through resistance. When you're discussing something that is very serious, or if you have been struggling in your relationship for quite a while, there can be a lot of resistance there. There can be a lot of moments where either of you, either your partner, yourself, or both are feeling very closed off and you don't feel safe to actually tell the truth in a very open way. And if that's the case, as you're asking these questions, you might face a lot of resistance where they're either not saying anything or they don't want to say anything or pretend like everything's fine, or they're just getting up and getting angry and walking off in a storm. But whether they're showing this resistance in a passive way or active way, you need to be able to fight through that resistance. And I'm not going to go too deep into this video because uh, I made a previous video on this very thoroughly. So click the link at the top of this video if you want to learn more about this topic specifically. 
and that video will go really deep into outlining how you can fight through resistance, what resistance looks like, and what happens if you do fight through resistance, and what happens if you fail to fight through that resistance. And number five is to propose solutions the right way. And so when you actually dig deep enough, you'll actually understand the issue from both sides very deeply. You understand it from your side, but you ask enough questions to your partner that you understand it from their side as well. And you also made both of you calm because your questions are allowing your partner to actually vent and actually tell their side of the story. And this can be very calming and very cathartic. And you've also made yourself calm because as you're discovering more and more pieces of information from your partner, things are making more sense. And when things make more sense, you feel a lot calmer because you understand now. And when you're calm and when you actually understand the issue, you are in a very good position to give really, really good solutions. But note the difference here with how most people do it, which is here, you are getting into the solutions and recommendations last. So for most people, whenever something is happening or a conflict is happening in their uh, very intense conversation or very serious conversation, they try to get into the solutions first, but they don't do the work to open up and to investigate the issue and so on. But this is a very different paradigm because you're actually starting by opening each other up. Then once you open each other up to nonverbal touch, you are asking questions and investigating each other's sides. And only then, only when you've fully investigated the issue, then do you give solutions or recommendations. So this is doing it the other way around. And it might look very inefficient from the surface, but it's actually the most efficient way to resolve conflicts. Because again, if you get into solutions too quickly before opening each other up and then before actually understanding and calming both of you down, that's gonna result in a fight and you're gonna go backwards. But at this point, when you're trying to give your solutions or recommendations, you don't just wanna say whatever you want. You wanna be able to say what you want or give your recommendation or solution in a way that does not raise their guard or make your partner defensive in any way. And so a lot of people, when they've asked a lot of questions, they think that that's the right. They have the license now to actually say whatever they want that's not true. And so when you're going to give your solutions or give your recommendations, you wanna do it in five parts. So the first part is that you wanna confirm your understanding of what you just talked about. So you can say, I understand that you felt like I don't care about you when I forgot our anniversary date. Then comes another very important part, which is when you ask, but can I say things from my perspective? And once you say this, you wanna wait for your partner's response before you go on. And the reason why this is so crucial is that you can never ever shove your ideas down someone's throat. Because when you try to shove your ideas down someone's throat, that person will become very defensive and they're not gonna be receptive to what you say, even if what you say actually makes sense. But by asking this question, you're making it their decision. You're making it their own choice to take what you say or not. And that actually, you know, reverse psychology makes people more open to what you have to say. So if you want your ideas to be heard, your solution to be heard, let them decide. Leave it up to your partner to decide whether they want to take your solution or not. Don't ever force someone to believe in your solutions or take your solutions, but make it their own decision to do that. And sometimes the funny thing is that when you force your ideas on someone else, they might actually just shut up and not say anything, but you can bet that beneath all those shutting up, there is a lot of bitterness there. There's a lot of rebellion that is waiting to happen. And so on the surface, it might seem like you actually got your way, but it's gonna bite you in the ass hard later when those, all those bitterness, all those rebellion comes out later. And so once you have your partner's response and the response is a yes, then you're going to clear up the misunderstanding. So you can say something like, you know, I'm really having some issues at work and my mind is just a mess right now. And I can't even remember to eat lunch at the moment. And so here you're clarifying that, you know, your partner was thinking that you forgot about the date because you don't care about the relationship. But here you're telling your partner that you forgot about the date because you're really forgetting everything right now because you're having so many issues at work. And then once you clear up this misunderstanding, you can say, so how about this? Why don't we reset and go to dinner Friday night? And so this is when you're giving your solution to that problem. And then the last part is, does that sound good to you? And again, this part is crucial because again, you cannot shove your solutions down someone's throat. You must make it your partner's idea to either take what you say or not. And so once you say the script, the next steps are quite simple. So you provide your solution in the correct way if your partner agrees, then just say thank you and just execute on whatever solution that you've proposed. Or if they disagree, then that means that you need to keep digging. That means that you don't understand the situation enough to where you can understand what solutions can remedy that. And so you haven't dug far enough. So you want to go back to step three and ask deeper questions and say, oh, you seem mad or you seem like you disagree with that. Can you tell me more about that? 
And you keep going and you keep discovering until you have some new piece of understanding that can allow you to have a new recommendation, then make your new recommendation and go through this whole cycle over and over and over again. And this might sound really slow, but understand that you don't have to do this all in one night or one day or in a couple of hours. You know, this conversation can go on for weeks if you want to, that is fine. But it's better than either, you know, cutting the conversation short by imposing your ideas, which creates a lot of bitterness and makes it more difficult for you in the long run, or trying to butt in with your solutions before you guys are calm, because again, that will make it harder for you in the long run as well. And so even though this might look very inefficient, this is actually the fastest way to resolve any conflicts that you have. And usually when you go through this cycle enough, you will find that win-win solution that actually makes both of you very, very happy. Why? Because when you actually find the root of every issue, any issue that you can think of, whether it's an issue as serious as like one person wanting children and one person not wanting children, you'll find that all of us behind all those desires wants the same thing, which are just love, respect, fulfillment, esteem, happiness, and so on. Just the basic human needs. And so now we just need to find out the how that will actually provide the win-win. And when you dig deep enough, then you will eventually find the root of the issue and the how usually will come to you in a very, very obvious way. But if the how hasn't come to you yet, then that means that you haven't dug far enough. So keep asking questions until the how becomes very, very obvious. Don't make assumptions, don't get angry. Just keep asking open-ended questions, simple. And so now that you have the five practical tips to stop arguing, you wanna make sure that you and your partner stop arguing for good so that you two can focus on more important things which is why I've created a free five-part video series. And this five-part video series will go into things like simplifying the complicated. So this is where you will learn how to simplify the issues in your relationship and find out that one thing you need to start doing to stop the conflicts once and for all. And the thing is that I know how overwhelming and I know how complicated things can seem when you're struggling in your relationship. And this module will cut right through the mess and give you crystal clear clarity on that one next step you need to start with. And once you find out what this one thing is, I'll show you the key mindset shifts that my most successful clients make. And once you can make these mindset shifts, it will be like seeing for the first time and everything will begin to change for you. And taking the next step that you found in module one will become much, much easier. And then in the rest of the modules, I will show you my five step system that allows you to resolve the most painful issues in your relationship. And these are the same five step system that I use with hundreds of my clients to help them stop arguments for good. And so if you want to get this course, then the link to get this is in the description box below. And if you're looking for a safe space to get support, to get mentorship or advice on your relationship, then you can also join our private Facebook group with a community of people who are more than willing to help and who are as dedicated to their relationship as much as you are. And the link to that is also below this video as well. And so if you found this to be valuable, then click the like button below and subscribe to this channel and leave a comment below which of these five tips were most useful for you, were most game-changing for you. But in the meantime, I hope to see you in the next video.